In this video, we're going to look at what is called or referred to as the laws of health. So what are the laws of health? So as my Qigong teacher said to me the very first time I met him, he said, you have to discover the laws of health and then you have to follow them. And back then, I really didn't know what he meant. But since then, this has become much more understandable and makes a lot of sense. And it's really important, which is why I'm sharing it here. So what are the laws of health? Well, they are the laws of nature, the natural laws of the universe. And it's all about living in harmony with the natural world. And one of the really interesting things is that humans seem to have forgotten that we are part of nature. We tend to think of ourselves as separate from nature. We look out at the world and we see the trees and the grass and the animals and the sky and the sun. And we think, well, I'm here in my body and everything outside is outside me and it's separate. And actually, this is one of the biggest misconceptions of the human mind is to think that we are separate from everything else. Human beings think that they are different somehow or separate from nature, but we are part of nature, just like animals, just like plants, just like the sun, the air, the water. We are part of nature and our body is made from nature. We are made from elements within the natural world, which is why we have the chemical elements periodic table, which we learn in school, which I personally never really did learn properly because I wasn't very good at science. But we are part of nature. And all of nature, whether it's an animal or a plant or a human being or a fish, they all follow certain rhythms. And one of the things with human beings is that we have got out of touch with these rhythms, which I'll talk about in a moment. But first of all, to share what is natural has become unnatural and what is unnatural has become natural. So what does this mean in terms of us and our humanity and our health? Well, quite literally, what is natural and in harmony with nature and the natural world has become unnatural and what is unnatural has taken its place. And for most human beings who are running around in their busy lives, they have no idea that this has happened. And maybe the first inkling that this has happened is when they start to get problems turning up in their life and in particular in their health. And even then, at that point, just at the point when they recognize that they have symptoms and maybe these symptoms have been going on for some time and they've been tolerating them for quite some time and they've got to a point where they're no longer tolerable because the inconvenience these symptoms are causing is just so great, they have no other option than to stop and take notice. And then we start to explore and we start to ask questions and we start to look for answers. And somewhere along the line, if we're lucky, we will come across information like this, as I did some years ago, and things really start to make sense. So what is it that has become unnatural? Well, how we live. Without realising it, we have moved further and further away from our natural state and from living in harmony with the natural rhythms of life. And so, for example, stress has become natural. And even illness has become natural. And for sure, if we look at the state of the world, inhumanity has become natural. So let's look a little closer at these three things. Now, most people are living in a constant state of stress. And I've talked about this in many other videos, so I'm not going to go into detail here. But the point is, 
Our natural state is to be very calm inside. That is our natural state. Our natural state is to feel a deep sense of inner peace and inner joy at all times. And that is how we're designed to live. But most people have no idea that this is the case. And in fact, for some people, if you were to try and explain this, they would think you were mad. They would think it was impossible. And so would I have thought that 10 years ago. But as we know, as our consciousness evolves, our perspective on life evolves, and what we previously thought was impossible or untrue becomes absolutely real and true for us. So stress has become the natural state for most people, especially in the Western world, where we have a lot of pressures to survive. You know, we have financial pressures, work pressures, relationship pressures. There's a lot of stress, in other words, pressure coming from the external environment. And that is causing our body to go into a state of stress and to live from that state of stress. But this is not what we call a natural state. And there is a difference between natural and normal. Stress has become normal for many people, but that doesn't mean it's natural. Natural is in harmony with nature. And even illness has become natural from the point of view that so many millions of people around the world are sick. The statistics are incredible. I was just looking at some statistics just today on Facebook from the Center for Disease Control. So for example, in the US, in the 2019-20 flu season, 14,000 people died and 250,000 people were hospitalized for the flu. And in 2018 to 19, the CDC estimates that up to 43 million people got sick during the 2018-19 flu season and that 650 odd thousand people were hospitalized and 61,000 people died. And that's a worldwide statistic. So illness has become a normal part of everyday life but it is not natural. What is natural has become unnatural and what is unnatural has become natural. And our natural state of health is to be healthy. And this is why this program is called a return to health. It's not about finding health, it's about restoring our health. And from a bigger picture perspective, Inhumanity has become natural. And what I mean by that is our natural goodwill and our natural humanity has been lost along the way through the traumas that we've experienced individually and collectively. And so we're not acting humanely in many ways towards our fellow man. And of course, there are many wonderful things happening in the world where people are acting amazingly humanely towards fellow man and animals and the environment and nature. But we've only got to look at the news or your Facebook feed to see all the stories of the inhumanity. And this needs to change. And as we work on ourselves, this does change. And this is why it's one person at a time taking self-responsibility for their actions and for healing themselves so that they no longer have to take out their pain on other people because essentially that is what it's about when we have pain inside of us we take it out on other people and for many of us this happened in our childhood we grew up in a family where our parents and our grandparents and our great-grandparents had suffered whatever they'd suffered, but not resolved that pain. And so it gets taken out on the next generation. So here it is that we say, no, this stops, the buck stops here, and I'm going to heal myself. And then that will have a positive effect on everything else. But first of all, I heal myself. So when we break the laws of health, 
which are these laws of nature, there are going to be consequences just like if we break the law in society and we get caught, there are consequences. We know what those consequences are. If you speed your car and you get caught, then you get fined. If you steal and you get caught, then you go to court and whatever the consequences are of that. And so it is with health, because these laws are universal. But most people don't realise this. They don't realise that A, they're breaking the laws of health and their own personal laws of health. And they don't realise the consequences. And the reason for this is that our body is incredibly resilient. And it can tolerate and put up with a huge amount of abuse for a very long time. And when I say abuse, I don't just mean abuse from other people, which can be a big part of it. I mean the self-abuse and the self-harm, which we're doing to ourselves without even realising it until things catch up with us and we start to not feel so well. So, for example, if somebody is living in a very stressful home situation where, for whatever reason, they're feeling unhappy, they're feeling very stressed, they're feeling afraid, you know, they're not able to relax, their body's not able to get out of the stress response, lots of stuff going on emotionally and stress-wise, if that goes on for a long enough period of time, at some point the body is going to start breaking down. It's just a universal law. It, it just has to happen because the body can only tolerate stress for so long. And that would be the same for anything. If you are driving your car too hard and you're not servicing it, at some point it's going to break down. Or if cars are driving over a bridge year after year after year and putting stress on that bridge and that bridge is not regularly repaired, then eventually that bridge is going to fall apart. And that is why, for example, every, every summer here in Auckland, they do regular maintenance and repairs on the Auckland Harbour Bridge because if they didn't, with all the traffic going over it, thousands and thousands of cars every day, it would collapse and they can't have that. So they maintain the bridge. And that is what we have to do with our health. We have to maintain our health. And most people, until they get ill, they're taking their health for granted and they're taking their body for granted they're not respecting the needs of the body. And the body has many needs. It has physical needs, emotional needs, mental needs, spiritual needs, energetic needs, all from this SMEEP model that I've talked about before. So if we look at these needs, first of all, physical needs, we need to give it the right food and the food that is right for us which will be different for each person and we will have a, a module on food we need to give it the right liquids we have to obviously take care of it and have shelter and clothes but food and liquids are very very important in terms of respecting our body as is movement and exercise and the right exercise for us because a lot of exercise can actually really be exacerbating stress inside our body. If we're pushing ourselves and putting ourselves into the stress response during exercise, then on the one hand, it may be healthy, but on the other hand, it may be actually counteracting the healthy effects because of the levels of stress that we're putting on the body. So we have to learn what is it that is healthy for my body? What is the right food for me? What is the right liquids for me? What is the right movement for me? And we have to discover that because we each have our own laws of health, if you like. It's not just one law of health for everybody. It's, well, what is, what is right for me? And then we have to look after ourselves emotionally and respect ourselves emotionally. And that means that we have to take care of our feelings and notice our feelings and acknowledge how we're feeling and manage and process our feelings. And this is one of the most underused skill and undertaught skill 
in our society at present. And this is why I've spent the last 30 years learning this topic and now teaching it because it's such a massive missing piece in the health puzzle. And then we have to take care of our mind, which means making sure that we're using our mind in a positive way and thinking in a beneficial way, because what we think really has a deep impact inside our body at a physical, cellular, emotional level. What we think is literally going to have an impact on our physiology and therefore on our health. So we have these laws of health and if we break them, if we disrespect our body and we don't acknowledge and fulfill our needs on a physical and mental and emotional level, then we're going to start having problems and we're going to start having symptoms. Now, if we look at the laws and, and rhythms of nature, we can easily see this if, for example, we look at the seasons. We know that we have four seasons. Anywhere you go in the world, there are four seasons. Sometimes, actually, in Chinese philosophy, we say five seasons. So the four seasons are spring, summer, autumn, winter. The five seasons are spring, summer, late summer, autumn, winter. And we all know that. Although, interestingly enough, the more disconnected we are from ourselves, the less we will notice the change in the seasons outside in the environment. So I remember, you know, 10, 20 years ago, I never used to notice the change in seasons. It would be all of a sudden summer had arrived or all of a sudden autumn had arrived, but I didn't notice the subtle change from summer to autumn. And now I do. I look outside and I notice, oh, that tree has got a few less leaves on it today. And the next day, oh, even more less leaves. And then a few days later, oh, all the leaves have gone. And, and then when it comes to spring, oh, there's some new buds there on that branch. I never used to notice that when I was disconnected from myself. So we can actually have a gauge of our connection with the seasons and the rhythms through observing how observant are we of the rhythms of nature. Now, what do these rhythms mean? They are part of the natural yin and yang activity, which is a universal law of life. Yin means rest and yang means activity. And these are Chinese philosophy words. So when we're in spring and going into summer, that is more an outgoing energy, an upward energy and an energy of action. But then when the leaves start to fall off the trees and we start moving into autumn and then into winter and there's no leaves on some of the trees, that is a yin rest time. So if we take a tree as an example, during the spring it has all the flowers and in the summer and then it, it drops the leaves in the autumn and the sap goes inwards into the in a part of the trunk in winter, whereas it will be more outwards in the spring and summer. And this is because the tree knows that in order to grow the flowers and the leaves for the summer, it needs to rest during autumn and winter. Because if it doesn't rest, it doesn't have enough energy and enough nutrients and enough goodness to be able to grow those flowers and fruits and leaves. And this is a cycle that it follows. And it's a fairly even cycle. In other words, you know, a quarter spring, a quarter summer, a quarter autumn, a quarter winter. It, it's not, uh, you know, 90% spring and summer and 10% autumn winter. It's an even rhythm and cycle. But humans have lost touch with these natural rhythms. So you've only got to think of somebody who does a, a full-time job. There's 52 weeks in the year and say they have a two-week holiday. Maybe if they're lucky, they might have three weeks or four weeks. So let's say they're working 48 weeks a year and they have 
two to four weeks off in that year. How balanced is that? That is a total loss of balance. So that's looking at things in a whole year. And what's amazing is companies, they expect their employees to perform 100% all the time. And that puts a great strain and pressure on us because we go to work and there's this expectation that we have to perform 100% every day. And this is not reasonable. It's not natural for a human being to be able to perform like that every day. We have our good days. We have our not so good days. But if we're out of balance to start with in terms of our yin and yang balance, then it's going to be even harder to perform well every day. Now, this rhythm can be also looked at on an individual day, on a daily basis. We have a 24 hours in a day, and there is a rhythm that goes through that day of spring, summer, autumn, winter. So spring is when we get up in the morning, summer is late morning, lunchtime, that sort of time, autumn is afternoon time, and then winter is nighttime when we're sleeping. So we need a good rhythm every day. We need to maintain this balanced rhythm every day. But a lot of people aren't. They're maybe going to bed really late and not sleeping enough. So their body is not resting and rejuvenating enough. And then they're surprised that they're really exhausted when they get up the next morning. And then they do this day after day after day after day, slowly wearing away their body, slowly exhausting the adrenals and increasing stress. And then they wonder why they start to get ill. Well, there's a reason. We've been breaking the laws of health. So what we have to do if we want to restore our health is we have to stop breaking these laws. We have to start following them and we have to find out what is our own particular set of laws of health. And we abide by them and we honour and we respect our body. We respect that it has needs and we learn to listen to the feedback of when we're on track and when we're off track. And that is what you're going to be learning in this program. You're going to learn how to distinguish when is my body telling me that I'm breaking the laws of health and I've gone off track versus when is my body communicating to me that I'm on track and I'm following the laws of health and therefore I'm going to get a beneficial outcome. Because we live in a universe of cause and effect and whatever we do is going to have an effect sooner or later. So as I've said, we have these natural rhythms, we have these body clock rhythms, and we need a variety and a balance of sleeping, eating, digesting, resting, play, work. Everything needs to be in balance. And in this program, you're going to be learning techniques as well to manage your balance and to even tell whether you are in balance or not. You're going to learn how to read your body so that you know exactly whether what you're doing is right for you or not, and whether that therefore is going to lead to greater health or whether it's going to lead to more symptoms. And at the end of the day, excuse the pun, it's your choice. It's up to you whether you want to make the changes or not. But I can assure you that when you start following the laws of health and your laws of health, and you start listening to your body and interpreting its communication and honoring it and respecting it and doing what is right for you, I promise you, your body will reward you with an improvement in health. Because as soon as we start doing what is right for our body, it will start bringing us back to health. It's just how it works because it's just the law of nature. And coming back to this issue of respect, one of the biggest reasons that we get symptoms is because we've been unconsciously harming ourselves. Now, that does not mean that we're a bad person. Please don't think when I say this, oh my goodness, I must be a terrible person and I'm a bad person and I've been doing it all wrong. And No, 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 no. 
This is all unconscious. But we have been harming ourselves by working too hard, pushing ourselves too much, putting other people first, not attending to our own needs. It creates stress, it creates negative emotions, and then it starts creating symptoms. So we have to learn that respect and love and care are part of these natural laws. And that applies to ourself. It applies to how we treat other people. And it applies to how we treat the planet and the environment and animals and nature and plants and anything. Because everything in its own way is sentient. And we have to respect everything. But we start by respecting ourselves. That is where it starts. We start by increasing our self-respect and the action that goes with that. We start by increasing our self-love and the action that goes with that. And we start by increasing our self-care and the action that goes with that. All these things are not just empty words. We don't just say, oh, I'm going to respect myself more and love myself more and care for myself more. No, there is action that goes with that. And in this program, it's the action that you're going to be learning. And I remember reading a book some time ago and it said, love isn't just a word, it's an action. So you're going to be learning how to take the right action to respect, love and care for yourself and to stop doing unconscious harm, which has been leading to symptoms. And this is going to be done on a physical level, a mind level and an emotional level. So to conclude, all change starts within one person at a time. And we have the power to make these changes. And it's just a matter of A, having the willingness and the desire to make the changes. B, having the right information and strategies to make those changes. And C, actually implementing those changes. So number one, desire and willingness. Number two, the right information and strategies. Number three, the actual implementation. Because one of my favorite phrases is an ounce of practice is worth a ton of theory. And whilst theory is really important for understanding the strategies, unless we actually implement them, we're not going to see any change. So what I teach in my programs is very experiential and hands-on. It's about actually doing it and then you see the results. And as I said before, we each have our own personal laws of health to follow and it's up to us to discover what these laws of health are and to live in harmony with them. And to add one more thing, the secret here in success is understanding how to tell if we're living in harmony with the laws of health or not. And the bottom line is, when we're following the laws of health and our own personal laws of life, we will experience health and happiness. That's the proof in the pudding. If we're following the laws of health and we're following our own personal laws of life, the outcome and the end result will be we will be healthy and happy. So this course is about how to get back on track and there are a multitude of ways to do this and everybody will have their own set that they will find because some strategies and exercises will be more appropriate or necessary, for example, for person A, whereas person B will need more of a different technique. And that is what you will discover yourself through recognizing what it is that you need. So I hope this has given you a nice little introduction to the concept of the laws of health and how you can discover what is right for you, what is beneficial for you, so that you can not just restore your health, but also ongoingly maintain your health. Because when we continue to follow what is right for us, that will keep us healthy. And that is preventative medicine. And that is really powerful stuff. 
So I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.